You know the whole story of the starfish, you know, throwing the starfish? A person walks up on another person, and uh, they, they see that person is picking up starfish on the beach and throwing them in the water, and they'd walk to the next one and throw it in the water, walk to the next starfish, throw it in the water, and they're just walking the beach, picking up starfish, throwing in the water. And the man asks them, why are you doing that? And he's like, well, I'm you know, saving that starfish life. If, if they stay out here on the sand, they're gonna die. And the man looks up and down the beach and says, there are miles of beach and millions of starfish. How are you gonna make a difference? And the man picks over and picks up another starfish and throws it in the water and said, it mattered to that one. What we wanna do is make sure that we're always tossing the starfish back in the water. Burdu means okay. Burdu means a lot, honestly. Like it starts with the people. They're really resilient. They're really resilient, and they're really strong people. It's awesome because you can help people change, and if people don't have the guidance there to change, how could they? I've grown up in San Bernardino my whole life, being a student in San Bernardino School District. Uh, I can't say it was easy, but I do see improvements for my children, which is really exciting. Now being a mom and looking at my kids, you look at things differently, and it's really exciting to see the progression that the school district's making and the strides that you guys are making for the kids. If we invest in them, they're only going to invest back into us. If it's not, if we're not taking care of them and looking out for them and providing a way for them, how are they going to do anything for themselves in the state? You know, we want our kids to to be excited to to get college applications and to be excited to hear about acceptance and stuff like that. I think that that's the things that we need to get back to be important for our kids is furthering their education, not just getting past fifth grade, not just getting past eighth grade, not just getting past ninth grade, but actually making it further and making a career and a future for themselves that can turn around and give back. With the 102nd pick in the 2000, 2019 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Alexander Madison. My name is Alexander Madison. I'm currently a running back from the Minnesota Vikings. So uh, some of my favorite memories from being at San Bernardino High School um, was just being a part of a culture where we could be ourselves and the student body was together. I feel like, um, especially my class, the 2016 class, pretty much, you know, when we had our events, we had rallies, we had everything like that. It was, it was fun to be a part of, and we were able to be together as a student body. Do you have any cool memories from any of your schools? I'd probably say football. That was a big part of um, me and my time here. And definitely would say that growing with those guys, my teammates and my coaches, um, was something that, you know, I won't forget. So this is your old stomping ground, the yeah. 110s right here. I remember the though. jump right here. I remember was it dirt you... when you were here still? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It was beat up. <laughs> it was... Yeah. So what was it that you jumped in these pits? I forget. How far? 22.9. 22.9, man. Yeah. And wind aided? That no. was, that was, <laughs> and that was here. That was... How, how was the AP experience here at the school? Did that, was rough. that the DI, prof oh, it was rough. Yeah, it was tough. And <laughs> I think the AP classes, the honor classes, yeah. being a part of the dual immersion program. Right. And having a challenge pretty much after, I'd probably even say my freshman year was challenging, yeah. but even after that, and the challenge just kept going this way, yeah. you know, AP Euro, AP, you know, everything sure. that just kept going up and up. You didn't have a soft schedule here that, that a lot of you, guys do yeah. in, in high school football. Yeah. If I was in regular classes, or it took, you know, the I'm a football player, not a sure. student sure. route, I would have had a hard time. How are you doing? I'm good. 
My name is Marlene Baikendova, and I am the Director of Positive Youth Development in the San Bernardino Sin Unified Youth School District. I have 20 years as an educator in the district, and I spent eight of those years as a middle school principal. We work with students who are chronically absent, and we have a ton of different efforts and programs to help students have, have positive attendance. So students who are chronically absent are students who are missing 10% or more of the school year. And as research shows, missing 10% or more of the school year has a profound impact on students' academic abilities, but also their ability to even um, keep up with their peers. And so uh, really, we, we we aim to reduce chronic absenteeism as a district. And for us, attendance is everyone's responsibility. Uh, so my name is Mercedes Argueta. I'm a youth service specialist here for the Positive Youth Development Department. Um, I have 16 schools assigned to me that I oversee their attendance and we schedule students that are having attendance issues. Um, when they have more than 20 absences, we schedule them to come into our office so we can meet with the parent to try to figure out a plan so that the students start attending school. And for us, there are many, many reasons why kids are chronically absent. And looking at the research, it shows that all of those reasons can be basically categorized into three areas. And so for one, uh, we have uh, barriers. The other one is aversions and myths. Even missing a few days of mo a month adds up to a lot of instruction. So what we have is we have kids that are just further behind than they should be in such things as reading and math and um, basic basic things they will need to be successful to get their diploma and to be successful in having a good job someday. We have in our department what's called student recovery specialists. They are people dedicated to going out there and finding those kids who have disengaged in high school and middle school. And we meet with the families, we do empathy interviews, we find out well, why, what was this, this person's story, um, why is the student disengaged or, or what is the barrier that's keeping them from school. So we, we have a lot of efforts um, going to getting back connected. All right, well, we're taking a note of all of these concerns, ma'am. Um, like I said, we are here because she has accumulated absences already every morning. And if you need to um, call us, you can call the Youth Services Department. We'll leave a phone number here for, for your reference. My name is Brenda Chow. I'm a Youth Services Specialist at the Positive Youth Development Department for the San Bernardino City Unified School District. At the scope of the work I do, I work with students that are chronically absent by meeting with them and their families and try to um, encourage them to improve their school attendance. Our board calls the families and the students in for a meeting according to the Ed Code 48200, which says that every single student from the age of 6 to 18 years old is required to be present in school on a daily basis. So whenever we have students with excessive absences, we must do something as a district to try to get those students back in attendance. We're not there um, to punish you. We're not there to say you're a bad parent by any means because you're not taking your kids to school. But we see that your kid might have some problem attendance. How could we help? These are the resources that we and the community could offer. A lot of our employees in our department have contact with parents, including myself, and we will learn about the different barriers, the aversions, the myths, and the reasons why they might be struggling either academically or with attendance or, or grades or even behavioral. Okay, so welcome here at Sierra. We're here to support the whole child. And that's why we had changed our vision to this vision graphic here. Our mission is to support our students emotionally, physically, mentally, financially, and not only academically. The Wellness Center is like the hub where we support everything that has to do with mental and physical health for the students. So our school psychologist and our nurse are here in this office. Well, lots of times when we speak with the families, we don't know why the kids didn't come to school because notoriously they see schools as 
the enemy or they're coming out to get me or let's not tell them anything and that's not what we're meant to be here. We're here to help not only the student but the whole family. Let me explain what Hazel Health is, is our telemedicine. So what they do is normally a student, if they're not feeling well, will take their vitals, we'll weigh them, take their blood pressure, temperature, oxygen, oxygen level, there's those of us that are trained. We plug it into our information for Hazel Health, which is on the iPad. All right, once we entered the vitals, then we just wait for a physician's assistant or a doctor to show up and they FaceTime the doctor. And they're getting a service that they probably wouldn't have gotten from home. There are students that haven't seen the doctor in years, honestly. So for them to be able to get that kind of service here is incredible. So the, this is our wellness center and our various rooms for different um, services. We have students that just need to be alone, right? They need to regulate themselves. They don't want to be in class. And we said that this is a safe space for them. So some places may have a calming corner. This is a favorite of the students that want to be alone. So what they do is they'll come in here, we have different type of seating. They could sit down here on the chair, um, start playing with the manipulatives, and they already know they'll check in with me and then just need a moment to like regulate. We've had many situations where students are just having a panic attack. My favorite are our weighted blankets that I feel like have been a godsend. So we just put it on them. <laughs> And they sit, especially the ones that don't like to be touched a lot. They just feel, they always tell me it feels like a big hug. And they just get to breathe and lay down or just sit here for a second. So this helps. And they even use it during therapy as well. So we're trying to be not only, hey, here we are, we have all these things for you, but being really precise in the services that we're giving to the students, trying to create open conversation about mental and physical health and letting them know that that goes hand in hand with their education. Because some kids will say, I'm just here for my credits. You know, I just want to graduate. Let me get out. Well, yeah, but why are you here? Yeah, I mean, what, what happened before that you weren't getting? We want to make sure that you're good in these areas so you can focus that much better. And after we normalize it, they'll hopefully, and, and what I have seen with students, but I'm saying the ones who are more apprehensive, learn to access these services by themselves because that's the whole thing that at least I try to address too. The city of San Bernardino is ranked as the third most dangerous city in America. Five homicides and two attempted homicides, all in the last six months. All in the same part of San Bernardino. So I'm proud to be a part of the San Bernardino community now. Um, in my early 20s, I was kind of ashamed of it because so many people look down on San Bernardino and there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of um, bad things that go on, but not everybody out here is bad. There's people that are homeless, um, not by their choice. They just have had bad things in life happen to them. Um, sometimes they just need the help. Sometimes they just need to, like I did, just break out of those th bad cycles. As much as there's bad people out here, sometimes they're just bad because they've had a rough life from childhood and up into their adulthood, and they're just doing what they need to do to survive. As much negativity that people say about San Bernardino, as much as people put it down, as much as San Bernardino has a bad rep for being this terrible city, it's not as bad as people say that it is. But it's it's not as bad as people say. I've, I've known a lot of people that were born and raised out here and we turned out fine. Um, I've known some people, you know, that have lost their lives to violence or addiction or other bad things, again, like any other city. But don't always believe people when they say how bad the city is, because it's really not as bad as people say. My name's Eric Vatier. I'm the safety and emergency manager here for the San Bernardino City Unified School District, and I'm also a reserve police officer for our school district's police department. Uh, being from San Bernardino, I think uh, working here, this is my home. And so it means a lot to me to leave this community better every day um, than I found it. And I grew up in rough areas. I grew up at Baseline and Waterman and Pacific and Del Rosa and rode my bike to Del Vallejo Middle School as a student. So I know the challenges that our kids face simply getting to and from school and that some of the 
the, the hardest struggles that our kids face are not on the campus. It's making sure that they have food in their stomach when they wake up in the morning and safe paths to get to and from school. And so it's really important for me, being a product of San Bernardino, to do my best to make sure that those barriers are removed so that our kids can get to school safe, they can feel safe while they're there, they can focus on their education while they're on campus, and then we can get them home uh, in a safe manner. What did they do today that was special that they didn't? They don't do every day? Were there teachers out walking around? Yeah, there's a teacher out walking around. So like, I go to school, I just like get out of my house and then like I walk with my mom or some other people. Was it uh, exciting walking with people today? Yes. Do, do you usually see that many people walking out here? So when you seen that many people, what did it make you feel when you opened this? When I said, look at all the teachers outside and we went outside and gave everybody high fives in the early morning? What did that make you feel like? You gotta tell them. So today we did a Safe Routes to School. We call it OSR2S, uh, Operation Safe Routes to School. And to organize it, um, what we did is we established safe routes that have sidewalks um, coming uh, towards school. We looked at a map. We selected six routes to school to come today. We walked those routes, made sure that kids are safe, parents are safe. Then we did presentations. We advised them that it's always safer to be in big numbers. So we also included that what time they need to be here, what time they need to wake up, um, what's the appropriate time to leave their home to arrive to school on time every single day. The idea came uh, starting with, with attendance, but then eventually we noticed that it incorporates a lot of other um, ideas. How do you feel about the events that the community? Uh, honestly, I think it's way better because I wish they had that back in the day when we were little. <laughs> but I'm glad that the, you know, the school is actually getting more and more into the community now. I've grown up in San Bernardino my whole life being a student in San Bernardino School District. Uh, I can't say it was easy, but I do see improvements for my children, which is really exciting. Now being a mom and looking at my kids, you look at things differently, and it's really exciting to see the progression that the school district's making and the strides that you guys are making for the kids. In the long run, we're hoping um, to continue doing this with all our schools, maybe designate a specific day to walk to school, uh, but hopefully we're trying to empower the parents. Ultimately, it's empower the community around the school that they could take their streets back as well. This one is our first walk that we've done here at Roosevelt, but other schools we've done it up to three times. And sometimes we do hear feedback from the students and from the parents that they keep walking the same routes and they keep with the same times as well. It makes them feel safer. I know there's a lot of potential here. Other cities look down in San Bernardino and sometimes I want to show that it's a community just like any other community, and if we all work together, we could achieve great success. I felt like I had a thousand friends. Do you feel like it gave you good energy this morning when everybody was giving you high fives and getting you all excited? Was that good energy? So my, en my energy is my out funness. <laughs> I liked it when everyone just got up together. I wanted to have it every day. Thank you for coming to Roosevelt Elementary. Uh, some of the struggles of getting to school um, and even like wanting to go to school and all of that I think has to tie into a lot of the responsibilities that some of these kids have outside of school. So you said there was a time where you were struggling a little bit with school and stuff? Yeah, so it stemmed from, you know, my mom losing her apartment. Mm -hmm. We ended up homeless. From there we were kind of jumping around with family friends or I was staying with a friend or we're yeah. not still going to school though. Um, it started becoming hindering around junior year um, my sophomore year things got rocky so my grades literally went from like a's and b's to c's d's and f's and as that got lower my attendance got worse mm -hmm. and so eventually like the predicament of walking for me was a debate like after school it was straight to work so 11 o'clock at night it was like i have homework to do 
So like sometimes I was staying at a friend's house, I was doing that. Yeah. I would jump around to my mom's like family friend. She has worry about the same priorities or whatnot. Overcoming adversity is all a, a, a lesson that you learn. I think the struggles of the city and going through the struggles of the city uh, is something that makes us stronger. I'm okay, I live with my mom and my sister now. And so everything's kind of back on track. Everything's running smooth. It's just making sure that I do what I gotta do. You know, you're in a situation where you, your mom and your sister were going through adversity. And now you're on the better side of things. You have a plan going forward. You have a future to look forward to. And that's just, you should be proud of that. And that's, yeah. that's a blessing to be in a situation now where you can smile about your day. You can smile about. Exactly the next day. You can smile about the next week. You can look forward to something and I think that a lot of kids in this city need to have the mindset of looking forward to something. Congratulations to Jalen Tate. My name is Dr. Antoinette Gutierrez, and I am currently the principal here at San Bernardino High School. And how long have you been principal? Well, this is my fifth year. Fifth, this is a very strange year, but this is my fifth year. I'm just ending my fifth year. Joseph, I've known since he was a freshman. So he's more like, he was he was petitioning in my office, trying to get a dance club going. I'm like, find an adult. I mean, seriously, from the get-go. And so he has come and gone and come and gone so frequently, um, but he's always been, um, I've always known him personally, and I've known his story. I've picked him up from places when he stayed at other people's houses, you know, and took him to school. Um, I asked him to be on the on my uh, principal's advisory, you know, to involve him to get him close because he has a great voice, and so um, that's really the difference. You know, I really have known him. So, out of the five years, he was my second class freshman, right? So I've known him the entire time. From the moment he opened his mouth and started talking, I knew there was something different about this kid, um, and I was really excited because I I just saw a lot of potential in him. Um, to help us perhaps build that youth court at San Bernardino High School. So then we had him apply for the youth ambassador and he got the position. But he got to lobby Congress. Yeah, that was awesome. It was awesome, the, you know, the fact that I can see, um, you know, Congress representatives and speak my mind towards things that we felt needed to be implemented, not just in my state, but other states. So as you may know, my name is Joseph Reed. I'm 18 years old and I'm from San Bernardino, California. I'm a senior in high school and I will graduate this June. Looking out at them, like when you say those words, will you all promise, right? It's because you want them to be intrigued. Yeah. Well, you want them to commit, like you want to know that. Xenophobia mm -hmm. and bigotry. Yes. Will you stand up against all forms of oppression, sexism, racism, biphobia, xenophobia, and other forms of bigotry? Yes. Then stand up. Stand up for kids like me. Stand up for all of those who can't stand up or stand out. It, it, it was just good knowing that you were able to make changes and to have all these other leaders around you and ambitious mindsets around you. It was like to grasp the concept of actually growing and developing not just yourself, but your community or your states. It just felt, it felt awesome you know that we're here to make changes and so it was just more of a push for me to take this whole HRC thing serious. Like I know right now we can't go back to school, but it, the scariest thing about not being back is not being able to have contact, regular contact with my students. This is approval of the emergency declaration COVID-19. All right, so the recommended action is approval and resolution declaring emergency conditions exist at San Bernardino City Schools and offices and authoriza authorizations to take any and all necessary actions to prepare and respond effectively to the novel coronavirus COVID-19. So what, one thing we learned during this COVID quarantine time and the need to switch to distance learning is that K-12 
kids with great attendance during the school year are doing outstanding at connecting with their teachers online, doing their work, really. They have that work ethic already there and they're really pushing. It, it is much harder for us to connect with those kids that were already having problems being engaged. So typically we would do home visits, we would come find these kids, you know, we're talking to the parents and it has been much more difficult to be able to do that during COVID but the efforts are still there. What's going on here? We, uh, we're serving meals for the students. This is the summer session 2000, uh, 2020, and we're serving roughly about uh, 625 average meals. We're here to help the people that really need some help. Yeah, and uh, really it is a, a great accomplishment that we're doing this for the city. Yeah, it's wonderful. These are the meal entries and these are the breakfast, breakfast items. We provided milk with the, in the back, juice, fruit and vegetables. The population here, uh, I would say about 90% of the population, they are on free and reduced meals. But for right now, we're providing free meals to, all, to every, every single student, no matter which school come from, if it's elementary, kindergarten, uh, middle school, we're serving all students. Yeah. If, they, if, the, if the family requests, if the person requests for five meals, we provide five meals. We're happy here to serve meals for the community, Yeah, because this are not easy times these are very difficult times and the money is a big factor in this uh in this um circumstances and providing meals for the students is a great thing to do yeah we're helping our community yeah that was perfect <laughs> mm -hmm. you know we do everything possible we can to really re-engage um, our seniors and re-engage our students during this time. Our, we had schools really making sure that kids have devices and their um, hotspots. There's just so many incredible efforts from across the district to re-engage kids during COVID. We didn't let that stop us. We continue to uh, really push to, to keep kids engaged and keep kids involved during this time. My name is Amner Porter. I'm a senior right now. Um, I'm about to graduate in a couple weeks. So my name is Alejandra Carbaja. I'm a senior. I attend San Gregorio High School. Yes, my name is Adrian Cook. I teach kindergarten in San Bernardino City Unified School District. Okay, I'm going to pull up the questions I sent you. Okay. All right, cool. Oh, well, for sure. Do you think in general people are valuing school a little bit more and understanding you know, kind of like day in and day out, the um, the impact that school has on them. Learning at home is very different to having a teacher show you up on a board or hands-on learning than to just learning through a computer. It's a very drastic change, but I feel like we all somehow got used to it, but it's not the same as having a teacher help you. At school, it's, it's very easy to, to be like, oh, I gotta go to class because the class is right there. You don't have the idea that, oh, I could be out making money right now, or I could be out utilizing t my time to do things that I want to do. How about instead of all of this, how about I look for a job and uh, save up some money for college or um, just better utilize my time? I do have 24 scholars, but I've really only seen about 16 consistently. So that's two thirds of my class. Um, I would love to see the other eight more often, but for whatever reason, I don't. And those reasons I know at kindergarten level are because of the parent not getting up and saying, oh, it's time for your 30 minutes of instruction with Miss Cook. It's time to see Miss Cook for 30 minutes. Um, they're not emphasizing that. They're not making it a, a priority. But the bigger detriment, of course, is not being able to go to school every single day because of COVID-19. We really want to make sure everybody is safe. We don't want anybody to 
get this illness. I personally do know people who have contracted the illness. I personally do know of people who have died. When we open schools back up, it's going to be critical to be on top of attendance. We are, are already prepping to respond in the first week when if students are not showing up either physically or if we do a hybrid type program, we need kids to be responsive virtually and participate. And, and we're already setting up those systems so that we can respond and uh, approach kids that are having any barriers, aversions, or myths, and, and we will respond accordingly. So we wanna change that. We, we don't want the divide to get bigger between San Bernardino's kids and you know a, a upper middle class city. We want the kids to perform at the same um, high level. And in order to do that, we need to keep them engaged. And it's, it's more important now than ever. yourselves. So maybe um, if you guys want to start and talk about first going to court and maybe My name is Jenna Yulo and I'm graduating from Sierra High School. I started off um, at Pacific High School. Um, slowly after that I started to mess up and I became um, less involved. Uh, my name is Monique. Um, I have a student that goes to Sarah High School. Um, I live in San Bernardino. Pretty much just grew up out here. Um, I lived in the streets for about 13 years, homeless, drug addicted, um, with no sense of love, self-worth, no support. Pretty much I just, everybody I knew was in that environment and I just thought that that's what my life was destined to be, that I was gonna die out in the streets. Um, how does your experience help you relate with your kids as they're growing up, but, um, especially with Jenna? Wow, um, so it was a real kick in the butt. <laughs> um, Jenna gave me a run for my money. I got her back when she was 13. I didn't raise her. I was in and out of her childhood due to my own addiction. Um, when I got her back, she was struggling with herself. So when I went to Pacific, I, ha I was doing really good, um, but I started hanging out with the wrong group of people. Um, they were doing things that weren't okay. I was always growing up looking for my father, fatherly love, looking for attention. Um, so I veered in that direction. Um, so I was pretty much a follower, not a leader. I feel it was peer pressure. And at the time, I wasn't a leader. I felt that I was a follower. So I did follow whatever they were doing, um, no matter what it was. One of my friends is the, what introduced me to uh, the youth court system. Um, they were going through it with their, with their child and I was just venting, like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help anymore. I'm, I, I just, I wanna give up. Um, and that's when I met um, Miss Mickey. So tell them how you felt like when you first walked in the office. So the first time I got to the youth services office, um, I was very upset. Um, I didn't know that um, that's where I was going because I had just got out of school. And I looked at her with like the meanest look. <laughs> much. I didn't want to be there, so I was doing whatever I could. Um, this way I didn't have to talk or I didn't have to say anything. I met Mickey. They called her, her in. Um, and like I said, it was different. There was a different vibe in the room. Um, she was one of the people who never gave up on me, no, no matter what. Uh, she stuck around with me. And now I'm here. Um, I'm graduating a whole year early. And I have a lot of thanks to give to her. Whenever I needed help or whenever I was going through an issue with Jenna, I'd haul her butt down to the youth court office and <laughs> we would do like an intervention. Um, we put her in youth court and it changed her. It made her um, open her eyes and see the person that she was and she's just done an amazing turnaround and I'm so proud of her. Um, she's graduating in a few weeks, which is awesome. Like I never thought I was gonna see the day, like I really didn't. Um, and being a parent, that's pretty sad, but that's an accomplishment that I want to see, you know. Um, to them, it may not mean a lot, but to us as parents, it's, it's, it's a one thing that we also feel accomplished for.
Hey everybody, Governor Gavin Newsom. And I'm first partner Jennifer Siebel Newsom. Congratulations, class of 2020. I know how anxious uh, this moment is, but I just want you to remember that your expression is unique. Nobody else has it. And remember, we're living in a time when we're desperate for leadership and leadership can be found anywhere. You don't have to be something to do something. And so please don't forget to contribute to life of your city, our state and our nation. Uh, we need you at this moment. Jeffrey, we feel like we're back at home. Huh? I do. It's like I feel like the lunch bell should ring right now. <laughs> so growing up in San Bernardino, I mean, it was a really fun time for me. Um, that was when our, our malls were open and we can ride the bus and go to various places. So for me, it was exciting. And all of my three brothers, we all went to the same school and have been in the city for all of our lives. So attendance to me is so important. Um, I always tell my kids um, who also were a part of this district and now in college and a college graduate, is that when you don't show up, that's a day in education that you'll miss and you'll never be able to make it up again. And in San Bernardino, we have been resilient. Regardless of what has happened, even now, as we are facing the pandemic and we're facing some other uglies in the world, San Bernardino has continued to be resilient through rebuilding, through working together when times are tough. And that's one of the reasons why I stayed. I wanted to continue to be a part of the solution and not the problem. Okay, great. Um, and I think I'm ready if you're ready. I think I'm ready, girl. <laughs> okay. Hello, my name is Vicki Lee. I'm one of the homeless liaisons for San Bernardino City Unified School District. Our, the name of our program is Atlas and that is access to learning for all students. So basically what we do is we, we reduce barriers in order for students to attend school and be successful. So there's a lot of abuse that, that, we've, that we've heard um, and um, our kids have to deal with a lot. Our kids are very resilient. They're survivors and that's the reason why we, we try to have as much patience and be there because a lot of times it takes a minute to be able to connect and you have to have the patience to be cursed out, to be told, leave me alone. Um, but you just have to persevere like our kids are. You have to keep on and keep on and keep on and pray and pray and pray and know and know that if you do what you're supposed to do, somehow, somewhere, you'll be able to get to that toughest kid because underneath that, that kid is trying to shield all the hurt, all the pain, all the suffering. I'm so sorry, but when I think about our babies and some of the things that they have to go through and I think about our team, I just feel so blessed that I'm with a group of individuals that care so much about the students that we serve and their families. I just feel so blessed to even be in this position. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. This is an inspirational message from Superintendent Dale Marsden. Tonight, since this is my last meeting with you, no one anticipated it would be <laughs> Chibang, <huh>? like this. <laughs> But uh, here we are. I'm so proud of our entire San Bernardino City Unified team continuously believing we could be better and now seeing we are better is such a wonderful gift. I've taught my children to leave a place better than you find it. I'm truly a grateful man and hope that we've done that here. And I look forward to what might lie ahead and will always, and uh, SBCSD will always have my heart and be in my DNA. You will remain in our prayers and we will continue to be this district's greatest cheerleaders and champions. I have every confidence great things are in store for the future ahead. So I just want to thank you. Thank you, you know, I think um, the, the greatest investment our community has is its children. You know, I often say that there's just an untapped commodity there's always stories that are shared, um, 
challenges that students face, yet what I hear resoundingly from them is that those stories, their drama, their trauma, their challenges they face, their poverty they live in is not what defines them. It's not their, their full story. It may be the cover art or the preface to the story, but it, they, they have all these chapters they want to write. And they want to play a critical role in physically transforming the city for the better. They see it as home. And they want the city to transform in the best way ever. I know that even with all the support I have, it is up to me to make the change and be the person they see in me. I think this is being videoed. And I hope so, because I'm making a promise to myself. I will excel. I will be a voice for the LGBTQ plus community and for those who are less fortunate and can't speak up for themselves. I didn't made a speech that thousands have seen and they didn't heard the promise. I can actually speak forth now and say that I did that. You know, like it happened. For a screw up, most of the time, you don't have a second chance, you know? And um, I, I made it, you know? I, April came and I turned 19 and you know, I find out in June uh, hey, I, I've graduated. And it's good to know that that was something that me and Alex was able to connect on given the circumstances of him being a former Purdue student and me being a Purdue student at the time. So I'd say for kids that don't have football or don't have something that motivates them or a goal set in life that they're chasing after, that's okay. It's fine to figure it out. Um, but just have hope and, and believe in something. Don't let a day go by where you think that your situation won't get better. I want to make sure that every student feels supported, that every student knows that they can change the direction of their life, that one mistake doesn't mean your life is over. It might be different. It might not be what you planned, but it's not over. And so, Every day I'm out there tossing as many starfish back in the water as I can and finding other people to help me throw starfish in. You know, everybody says, well, you know, there's miles of, of beach and millions of starfish, you know. How are you going to make a difference? But if I have more people with me tossing in the starfish, we can reach even more. Everything I've done, whether it be supporting teachers or supporting students, has been to make sure that, that everybody around me can throw those starfish back. with the safety committee. So they were gracious enough to invite us. Um, just that first step of knowing, because we didn't know what we were getting into, we're not sure what this project is, who we're gonna work with, what the community's even like. And then they just came to us with open arms. Hector kind of introduced us, Mickey introduced us, and they wanted us there all the time. They wanted us at every meeting, they wanted to hear our feedback, they wanted to hear our ideas. And that was so enriching. It was, it was comforting, it was enriching. Um, it was kind of a relief to know that we can step into this community and be welcomed and hear their voices, support their concerns, and just take it from there. And like here was a whole table full of people who've been here their whole life and were not moving out. They were, they were sticking around. And that's what was so impressive to me. And the fact that they opened up that circle and let you in um, so that you could understand San Bernardino through their eyes, I think those are the two things that really were impressive. 
to me in that meeting.